Hey crazy friends. Hey guys. It's Jay and Francis with Find Your Crazy. Uh, we are a family of nine who travel full time in our RV with six of our kids as we go around the country to see every national park. And today we're bringing you another family tour guide for Yellowstone National Park. Ah, uh, favorite. It's amazing, but it's also huge. huge. Uh, and so we're actually going to break it up into a couple of videos. And so in this video, we're going to talk about all the things that we saw from the north entrance of the park. Stay tuned. Okay, so Yellowstone is near and dear to our hearts because this crazy RV adventure actually was birthed out of Jay and I's first trip to Yellowstone. That was both of our first opportunities to go. It was a long time ago, way before all the kids, and Jay was a student pastor at a church, and we had the opportunity to take a van full of kids all the way up to Montana, and on the way back through, we tent camped in Yellowstone with a bunch of teenagers. And so we knew then when we left that we were going to be back, but this time with our own van full of our own kids. And so this one is super special to us because this was Yellowstone was really when we began to talk about taking a little bit of an RV adventure, we really just wanted to see Yellowstone. We had no idea that God would open up the door for us to see all the national parks. We really just wanted to start seeing one. So when it came time to go see Yellowstone, uh, it wasn't really in our plan right now. Uh, so we were south uh, in the U.S. planning to see some parks down there, and the fires broke out, uh, and we had to run away from the smoke. And so we ended up <laughs> up in Custer and Badlands. And so we, honestly, at first, we didn't think we were going to be able to get Yellowstone right. because it's really hard to book, uh, which brings us to our first family pro tip. If you're planning your trip to Yellowstone, make your reservations yes. really very early, early. and um, even, some of them yeah. campsites book up a year in advance yes. literally as soon as they open and their especially window right now as our people are RVing um, that we thought that we were fine because we were after Labor Day but it didn't matter they said that their season is just slam packed now from the time that they opened after COVID all the way through until they closed down for the season so we just had to string together what we could get which ended up actually being a blessing we couldn't get all of our reservations in one spot we had to move around the park um, but that actually is going be our second family pro tip for you is to plan to stay in multiple areas around mm -hmm. the park yeah we all know that yellowstone was the first national park and we know that it's big but honestly you don't know how big no. um it is massive uh and eating up all of your time during the day driving back and forth can get kind of old and so we figured out from our um, happy accident that <laughs> staying in multiple places around the park outside of each of the main entrances really maximizes the time that you get to see stuff and minimizes the time you're just driving back and forth right. along the same roads so when we stayed uh, we stayed in two different places. We stayed out of the north entrance and we stayed out of the west entrance. And so this video, we're gonna focus on just the things that we saw when we were there at the north entrance. And we were about 30 miles uh, outside of the north entrance of the park. So here's the first, the next family pro tip, is as you're planning your routes around the park, mm -hmm. know that it's gonna take you a long time to yes, drive. It is. Uh, you realize the park's big, but then when you look at miles, you're like, man, that's not going to take us that long. We should be able to get there in like 30 it's minutes. It's only like 20 miles. It takes a lot longer. Yes. Um, you just have to drive slower on these roads, and then you just never know when there's going to be a animal jam. When somebody's <laughs> going to see a bison and pull over, or elk and pull over, and when that happens, you're stuck. And there's so many beautiful things to see that you want to take your time. You don't want to be mm. rushing and racing through the park. Just try. We, we were actually on a boardwalk and we saw this guy and he was like running through this boardwalk and the geysers and he was taking a picture of himself and then he kept running and then he took another picture of himself. And so you don't necessarily want to see Yellowstone at a breakneck pace, running as fast as you can, snapping a few pictures. You want to take your time and maximize that. So plan that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're talking about how long does it take to see Yellowstone? Mm, how long that, do you have? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that, it really is, honestly, um, that is the truth. If you've got one day, mm -hmm. 
go spend it in Yellowstone. Yes. You can see some amazing things. You can. But if you've got a month, you could not see the same thing twice in right. that same amount of time. Yes. Uh, and so it's really, this is one of those parks, a lot of the parks is easy to say that. Like mm -hmm. we say, hey, this is a half day park. This is a two day park. Yellowstone, as much time you as just you have. can't. Um, mm -hmm. And so really as little as a single day, if you're just driving mm -hmm. past it, or as much as a month or longer, you could see and you don't a want to different miss thing it. every day and not miss it. Um, so just plan as much time as you can. But once you start really ready to um, start looking at things, uh, there are some really amazing things to see there. Uh, and most all of it is due to the fact that Yellowstone is an old volcano. And so there's lots of thermal activity uh, underneath, which uh, produces hydrothermal activity. That's hot water activity. So all that heat underground is heating up water and it expresses itself in all kind uh, mm -hmm. of different ways. And what's crazy is more than half of the thermal features in the entire world are located in Yellowstone. It's crazy. Spectacular. Uh, and so they're just all on top of each other, but they're all so unique um, that seeing uh, this, seeing five geysers in a row is not like seeing no. five geysers in a row. It's seeing, they're, they're, so, they're so unique. Seeing, um, you know, a dozen hot springs in one area is a dozen different experiences. And so you want to take time to maximize that. That's right. So we started our adventure with our first must-see of the park from the north entrance, and that's Mammoth Hot Springs. Yay! So amazing. Um, and one thing that you've got to know also about Yellowstone, because it is so big and so many people go to see it, everything is just different than a normal national park. In a normal national park, there's a visitor center at the entrance. And so you stop and maybe you get a t-shirt, maybe you go to the restroom. At all of these main entrances around Yellowstone, there are villages, um, yes. which are just chock full of gas stations, restaurants, mm -hmm. visitor centers, gift shops, information areas, Everything museums. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, they're literally little villages. Right. And you can um, stay there too. There's actually some places where you can stay in the different kind of hotels and different cabins and campgrounds. And so there's a lot to offer offer in Yellowstone. It's really a one-stop shop. You can just kind of spend your time just in the park. So when you get to Mammoth, just realize there's there's going to be a lot of things you're going to see in the village and kind of walk around mm -hmm. before you even walk over to the actual Mammoth Hot Springs. Uh, but when you're ready to, it's an amazing opportunity. So many different hot springs concentrated in one area that you can walk around. It's all boardwalked. It mm -hmm. is a, a lot of steps. Um, there are a lot of steps there because it kind of goes up the hill. But here's something that we learned after the fact that we're <laughs> going to share with you right now. So this next family pro tip for Mammoth specifically, good one. don't walk up from the bottom, drive up. So we started at the bottom, <laughs> walked around in the bottom, and then started taking all these stairs all the way up to the top. A lot of the stairs. And then we got to the top, we realized there's a road that goes up there. <laughs> and what's funny is like, there's this one set of steps that it crests up where you see the parking lot for the first time. And so we were standing there and I promise you seven out of the 10 people that walked the top said the same thing. They were like, I didn't know there was here? a parking lot up here. So save yourself a yes. lot of steps. Um, see the bottom part and mm -hmm. then drive up to the top and off of the main road, there's actually a loop that goes around the top of the hot springs with lots of different places you can park. Now we will say it gets, the parking gets pretty tight. Pretty and so you're not going to be able there. to like park and move and park and move find a place to park yeah. and then walk out there along the top yeah. uh, as well and our twins our special needs they usually can hike and walk and never complain they have just been amazing to hang with us but i will say on this one ruthie I'm was tired. completely I'm done tired, she was like i done i all done i all done this walk so i will say we were all done with this walk yeah. and so i would just say you know if you really just want to get your exercise and your steps in and your floors in on your fitbit then you go for it because we did and but it was not, beautiful drive up but no the there's a better way <laughs> uh, and so once you got up there you can see from the top and bottom there are just so many beautiful things to see check it out in the big rock candy mountain there's a land that's fair and bright where the butterscotch grows on bushes and you can sleep out every night where the boxcars all are empty and the sun shines every day On the birds and the bees and the peppermint trees The lemonade springs where the bluebird sings In the Big Rock Candy Mountain In the Big Rock Candy Mountain All the bears have wooden legs And the bulldogs all have rubber teeth And the hens lay soft boiled eggs 
The farmer's trees are full of fruit And the barns are full of hay Oh, I'm bound to go where there ain't no snow Where the rain don't fall and the wind don't blow In the big rock candy mountain In the big rock candy mountain You never change your socks And the little streams of chocolate drops Come a-trickling down the rock Your birthday comes round once a week And it's summer all year long There's a lake of stew and marmalade too You can paddle all around it in a big canoe In the big rock candy mountain I'll see you all this coming fall If it's free for one, then it's a free for all In the Big Rock Candy Mountain So once we finished up at Mammoth Hot Springs, we decided to go around to the east side of the park. Uh, we skipped right over North Geyser Basin because we knew we were going to be staying in the west, and so we were going to catch that with the other ones, and so we'll share that in the next video. And so we went around to Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Wow. And it was one of the most picturesque, beautiful things that we've probably seen in all of our adventures right. so far. Um, the geysers and the hot springs are so unique um, in, in what you see, um, but the waterfall there at Upper and Lower Falls there at the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone are just iconic yes. natural beauty. Uh, it's no accident that that view from Artist Point of the fall coming down into the canyons is one of the most recognized um, when associated with national parks. Yes, and it doesn't matter whether you're an amateur um, photographer or an avid photographer, this place is one that you will never forget. And it is a beautiful backdrop for your family photos and just landscape photography because you cannot take a bad picture because it is that beautiful there and, and it's really um, interesting because it's really only kind of I guess three two things that you're seeing so you're seeing upper falls and lower falls inside of the Grand Canyon itself but you could literally spend an entire casual day seeing that um, because they have roads that come in from the north side as well as from the south side there's multiple viewpoints multiple trails and so you get to see each of these things um, from different angles. Uh, and I would highly suggest yes, that you do that. Um, sure. That's our next family pro tip is don't just go to one overlook and say, I've seen Upper Falls, I'm done. Um, go to both sides, look at it from multiple mm -hmm. angles because it, it, it's almost looking at something different, even though it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so unique, so beautiful that you're going to want to see it from those multiple viewpoints. Uh, and then, of course, uh, our must-see uh, on this side above everything else is Artist Point. Um, it is, again, just iconic. It's called Artist Point because For so reason. many painters and, and photographers have taken amazing shots and painted amazing portraits there. So uh, and lovely. it doesn't matter what time of the day mm -hmm. um, or what the time of the at, year. Or time of the year. No. Um, it is unbelievably breathtaking to stand on that point and to look out through the canyon and see those falls um, falling off there uh, in the distance. It's You're going to want to snap a thousand pictures.
once you've seen all that iconic beauty, uh, you might want to go down and see some stinky beauty. Um, Our boys love some stinky beauty. If you've got boys, um, you definitely need to take the little trip. Um, it's just south of the Grand Canyon down the road to the sulfur pits and the mud volcanoes. Uh, it, yeah. They are super, super, super unique. Um, and so uh, the sulfur pits is exactly what it sounds like. It's a big old boiling mud pot that smells like rotten eggs and um, our boys loved it yeah. <laughs> um it was fabulous um but then across the road down a little bit further uh, in the area is you have to stop uh, and our next must sees there's actually two uh, you want to see the dragons um so there's yes. dragon's mouth mm -hmm. um which is a fumarole coming up uh, out of a hot spring uh, and then there's black dragon's cauldron which oh, is a mud pot um and they're both right there in the exact same pot of the same boardwalk it's a really easy boardwalk mm -hmm. a few stairs but mostly flat you get to see a lot of other features along the path, but those two. So cool. So, so cool. Um, Dragon's Mouth specifically uh, is a, a big hot spring, but where it comes up out of it, it comes out of a little cave on the side of it. Ah, and so the first person said it looked like it. a dragon's mouth with the smoke being the tongue and the water uh, sprays out and as it comes up. You can hear it and it hisses it gurgling. and it gurgles and it sounds literally like it's you're like in a cave a dragon with a dragon. In the cave. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. And our kids loved it. So it is worth it and it's fun to see different types of unique features in Yellowstone you want those iconic times but you also want those memorable kind of laugh out loud crazy unique things you've never seen or smelled before but it was so fun for our kids to experience such diversity in this park because like Jay said it isn't just once and done it is a complete journey of your senses all of them to explore Yellowstone and there is so, more than you could ever do and and explore in one time and so you just need to keep stopping off at these little places and you'll be surprised at what you and your kids like yeah it's a boy favorite for sure yes pretty much wraps up the things that we did from the north entrance um, and so as we said we're going to do a second video of all the things that we did from the west entrance oh, so it's you such can a catch great that place. next week That's yes all of the Don't geyser basins uh, including of course the most iconic old faithful um, and we had a pretty grand adventure there yeah and we have a special guest visitor during our time at old faithful so you don't want to miss it so tune in next video to check that one out uh, so if you found this video helpful then give us a, a like uh, if you want to see more of what we're doing then certainly subscribe to our yes. channel you can catch all of our family tour guides for the national parks but also uh, our rv family life videos as we share what it takes to live in an rv full-time as well as our sunday crazy faith videos as we share what god is teaching us through all of our adventures and if you hit that subscribe button, you won't miss out on anything. And so until next time, we want you to have some crazy fun with your crazy family. We'll see you later, guys. Bye.